Welcome to another episode of D-Link TV q and I'm Mike, and I'm here with Joe, Howdy. and we're here to take your questions and answer them right here on the show. Great. We have a little web form that you guys can fill out at www.dlinktv.com. You go ahead and fill out the form, and we'll get your question right here on the air. So uh, let's jump right in. Uh, Christian from Montreal uh, wants to know if the DVC-1000, which is our broadband video phone that connects to your television, can it be used to talk and send video from Montreal? Australia and Vancouver at the same time. Wow. Somebody's yeah. doing some conferencing. Right. And, and, and this is his relatives, I guess, live all around the, the world. Okay. But, uh, but the you, answer is... You can't do that, can no. you? No. Sorry, but no. Uh, this is more of a point-to-point -point device, is that right? Right. It's more of a consumer level, you know, one, so it, it's just from one point to another, so the relatives will have to wait in line to talk to each other. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so... Uh, Irene from Norwich, Connecticut says she has a DI624, this is uh, our uh, mainstream 802.11G router, uh, with the matching DWLG650 card bus adapter, which works great if she's right next to it, but as soon as she gets about 10 feet away, she gets disconnected. Mm. And she wants to know if she needs a better router. Uh, sounds like some interference, and uh, there's, there's a lot of things she's going to have to consider. Right. So, uh, I there's guess... Well, I, I'm, I would say I would start with looking at, like, your cordless phone. Is it right. 2.4 gigahertz? Are you using baby monitors? Um, how close is the, the router to, say, things like uh, microwaves, uh, refrigerators, things like that? Um, also, if you were to do, uh, like, to scan in the wireless utility and look and see how many networks are around you. Maybe, sure. maybe if you live in, a, in, a, in an apartment, apartment environment. Yeah. Um, or even the structure of the building, what it's made out of. Sure. You know, things like that. So you might want to look into doing something like uh, using some power line to put an access point in another part of the house. Sure. Or um, another really good uh, possibility is to switch to the, uh, the 5 gigahertz 802.11n. So you could use like our gaming router or the DIR855 to do that with. Right. So uh, another thing would be to add a booster antenna to the 624. Yes, and so a lot would depend, too, on where physically that router is located because if it's behind the computer, behind a nest of wires, it might not be getting a chance to broadcast. It might be trapped by everything. Right. So repositioning the router, repositioning the antennas, sometimes just a subtle turn or a subtle shift on the desk could be just enough. Yeah. So first try moving things around, check interference, find out what other things like cordless phones are notorious for interfering. Yeah. Um, those are the, the first things I would start with, right? Right. I would, I would look, look at all of those different things that ca can cause interference. Yeah. But getting a better router, the DI624 uh, was our uh, flagship router for a number of years. So it's a, it is a really good router. So I doubt that it's just the router. You may have a bad unit. Um, so there's a lot of factors that can come in there. Right. So what if she does find that there's a lot of routers in her neighbors and she's got crowded airwaves? I would go with the 5 gigahertz. Okay, uh, but what about using this equipment right here? Couldn't she change channels? I think yeah, we have yeah. another video that she could refer to. Uh, yes, I'm not really sure which vi episode that is, but what, what that would be would also be at the same time you're doing the site survey. Um, look, and the, by site survey I just mean scanning the networks in your in your neighborhood. Look and see if you have almost all of them are on say channel six and you're on channel six, change to channel one, change to channel eleven to get away from all of that traffic. Okay. And the D-Link utility would give that survey, right? Yeah. Okay. So just go to the, the laptop or desktop that's wirelessly connected and just do a little scan. Great. Yeah. So there's there's some ideas for you. Hopefully you get that problem fixed. Good luck. Uh, okay, we have uh Riemann in the Netherlands. Uh, the, he has a DSM-750, and it has two user modes. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this real quick. There's media player mode, and there's media extender mode. The media player mode 
will work using uh, just about any type of UPnP server. So say like our DNS 323 or some server software running on your computer where the media extender mode is directly connected to a Windows Media Center. Uh, it has to be a Vista Ultimate or Vista Premium uh, machine. Okay. So the one is kind of tied directly to an OS, and the, the other one is more open. Okay. So both are user interfaces to access media that's been configured to be shared. Right. But one of them is sort of a doesn't need Microsoft uh, operating system. Right. But the other one does. So the media extender actually gives you more stuff, a little bit. Yes. So, like, nicer the, interface. If, if you do have a media center PC, okay. uh, you can do things like if you have a TV tuner card, you can record TV oh, nice uh, shows and, and use it like a, a DVR okay. uh, functionality, things like that. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's different draws for each one. Okay. Um, but uh, what he wants to know is. When he configures, say, the media extender mode uh, to work wirelessly, and then he switches to the media player mode, is he going to have to reconfigure everything? Ah, and so. the answer is no. Once Great. you've configured it to connect to your wireless network, all you're doing is telling it to run a different set of software you know, on, on the device. Great. Very flexible. Yeah. So, uh, cool. okay. That, that, that takes care of that one. And then uh, Perry from Scarborough, Ontario, says he has a D-Link router Connected to a desktop PC and printer. Hmm. He has a laptop that he wants to be able to print with and wants to know how to set this up. Wow. Now, Perry didn't give us a lot of information. Yeah. So I'm going to take a wild guess. Well, we'll do a couple of scenarios. Okay. The first scenario would be with the printer connected to the PC, and then he has a laptop that doesn't have anything, and the PC is wired to a wired router. Okay. Okay. What you would want to do in that situation is turn on file, file and print sharing, although we have a caveat about that, um, at, buy a, a wireless access point and connect it to one of the ports on the wired router, and then buy a wireless laptop adapter. Now your laptop will be able to wirelessly talk to your computer right. and use the printer that way. Right. But file and print sharing is not the safest method for doing that because you have to turn on both at the same time. Yeah. Um, we recommend getting a print server and that would connect to one of the ports and the access point and the laptop card. Okay, so, so then the print server makes the printer look like it's part of the network as a device on the network. Right. It's not going through the PC, so there's no security issues with sharing. And the, one, of the, one of the other good things about doing that, taking it off of the PC, is now that PC doesn't have to be running if right. you just want to print something. You know, you just want to you know, print something off your laptop, okay. why fire up your desktop? So that's where a print server comes in. Great. Yeah. Right. So I, I, you know, one of those two methods, but you know, we recommend using a print server over file and print sharing. Great. All right. So that's going to do it for this episode of D-Link TV Q&A. I'm Mike, and this is Joe. Hi, Joe. And if you point your browser to www.dlinktv.com, go ahead and fill out the little web form, and we'll get your question answered right here. Thanks for watching. Thanks.